Love is in the air, and if not, February's around the corner anyways. I've got a really fun and easy applique project for the true romantics at heart. Let's get started. That's right, that's right. We've got another great holiday-based tutorial coming right at you. Welcome, everybody. My name is Rob Appel, National Sales Manager over at Michael Miller Fabrics and also the official maker of fun right here at Making It Fun on YouTube. I am super excited that you are here joining me today. <gasps> Better take a deep breath. My goodness, I guess I came on pretty strong, didn't I? Yeah, we're gonna do this really fun, super easy little applique project over here. It's actually a reverse applique, which makes the letters all the easier. And I kind of want you to learn how I do the setup on this today. So we're gonna focus more on the mechanics of how I created the uh, freestyle pattern to be. There is no pattern. I really wanna teach you all how to fish today. I don't want to hand any of you a fish today. So please follow along. I'm gonna teach you how to create the letter and then turn it into the applique. And then what I want you to be thinking is how fun this could be is a standalone quilt like this. This is made on a fat quarter. Or you can do a bunch of different size heart blocks and put them all into a quilt that might look like one of those wonderful little boxes of the candies that had all the different words. Because yes, mine says with love because I am a romantic at heart. But you can do any words you want in your heart applique today. So as we're diving in, again, you know I only use the finest of fabrics. Those come from Michael Miller, of course. And we're going to be using some of our wonderful basics. You should hopefully be able to find these in most of your local quilt shops and online retailers out there. So one of my favorite fabrics is called Hash Dot. It's our background. This is the ebony color, right? And then on our Fairy Frost, a longtime favorite at Michael Miller Fabrics, we have the Venus color. And then this petal color here is the pink, but it adds an extra little extra glitz on top of the already awesome metallic. And then with our Cotton Couture, we have the Jewel and the Jam, and that's all you're gonna need, but you don't need these giant piles like this. You barely even need a fat quarter of each. So that's really your supply list there. And like I said, the background's a fat quarter, so you can tell we're not gonna even use a fat quarter of most of the other fabrics. Of course, uh, you'll need some paper-backed fusible web. My very favorite, and let me put it so you can see there, that is the Heat and Bond Feather light, feather light, because I'm gonna put a couple of different layers on top of each other, and that's gonna make it so that it's still very easy to needle through when we're doing our free motion machine quilting down the road. A few of the tools that I recommend you all have today, Sharpie marker, uh, that's gonna be done for creating our pattern to be. Um, a little pair of scissors, straight scissors. We're going to use those for cutting out our applique. If you are fortunate enough to have the Rob Appel created shark applique cutter, the little 14 millimeter cutter on there, that's going to also be a handy tool for cutting out a lot of the parts. Not necessary, but it is a pretty cool little tool you might want to pick up. And then some sort of a seam ripper or stiletto or tweezers or things. I like to use those for moving my appliques about. And then once we have all of your tools and everything gathered, that it's time to get into our creative side and we're gonna make for ourselves our little pattern just like that and it was really easy and I did it all in my computer so we can just pull out the computer right where it can open up any kind of word processing program or even better you can just ask your assistant to do it all for you and he'll walk you through the steps First step is ask the assistant to go ahead and change that page into a landscape format under the print settings often. Then you're gonna go ahead and type in any word or words that you wanna use for your project. Now choose a font that you like. Now I really like a font where the letters connect. It makes life so much easier in the applique process. Resize it so it looks just the way you want it and you are done. And once you have your pattern all printed out of your printer, you're ready to basically get in here and start clearing out your workspace a little bit. So let's move those beautiful bundles over there. We're gonna need that heat and bond. And now we are gonna go to just our fat quarters at this point. Let's get this a little bit closer, easier to work with. And now you know there is an incredible new product from Heat and Bond that is a printer sheet that runs through your eight and a half by 11 inkjet printers. And you could do that except for what we really need to do because it's letter 
layering is we need to transpose or reverse the letters. The easiest way to do that is just going to be go ahead and trace this from the back side. Now, those of you with some serious computer skills know you could have turned this into a JPEG, taken it over to a piece of art software and done a transposition of your image, and then you could have printed it out. But we're also going to want to make a heart around the back. So let's just do this all manually. And like I said, I'm teaching all of us today how to fish. I'm not handing out fish. So let's learn all of the basic, basic steps. And that way you can really brew and grow your creativity. So if you've never used a paper back fusible web, let's move off of our instructions. This is wonderful. Like I said, it's the ultra light or the feather light from Heat and Bond. I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's a real shiny side and then there's an obvious paper side. So we're going to start by tracing onto the paper side. And when I lay this down here, let me just move the paper so I'm not making all that noise with it. I know I am wearing a microphone. Now, I am doing a couple of things real quick visually. I have moved my lettering down from the top. There's the top. Here's where my lettering starts, if you can't see that perfectly already. Because I do, I'm just going to freestyle draw in the heart when we're all done. And uh, one of the tricks I was about to point out is if you can't see the lettering very well at this moment, you could, of course, use a light table. That's what I really like to do. You could lay it up against a window or worst case scenario, but this will still work. You you could first take your Sharpie marker and you could draw the lines you see now like this. And then when you lay down the paper, you can probably see that that line there is a lot easier to see. So nonetheless, I'm going to quickly go ahead in here and just I'm going to trace the entire word setup. And what this is really going to be is this is going to be cut away. So one of the things I like to do when I'm going through my lettering here is that any of these sections I come into, which are going to have a piece that in the tracing represents the whole, like in an O or the center of an A or this little loop right over here in the V, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it in and I'm actually going to put an arrow pointing up so I know which way this will actually lay back in. This is going to be a keeping piece. These areas out here are going to be the cutaway or the fall, the scrap, the we're not going to use it pieces. So with that said, I want to make sure that I'm marking constantly so that I know when I lay my scissors in here because like I, this is going to be a reverse applique and I really want my cuts to be clean all the way around. So I trace out those letters. We'll do the same here by starting with the center of the O. Put my arrow facing up. And if you've seen any of my other applique videos, you know if I don't want to use something, I will actually put an X in that space, meaning that I'm going to cut it out. Now, once I've gone ahead and drawn in, or traced in, I should say, my letters, now I want to draw that heart. So this is basically going to be kind of centered. And I did try to position my one short word over so I can basically do my first big heart bump right over the top, just like that. Freestyle down. Come on in here like this. And then I'm going to do the second one. Okay. And I didn't do this intentionally, but you can see that it's not very symmetrical at all. Now we like wonky. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know I like my wonky. This side is much further away from the letters than this side. Super easy. We've got nothing yet. So I'm just going to restart. I'm going to come over here. And when I come around that hump, this time I'm going to come nice and wide. Come back down in here and extend it out. And now I like the shape of that really nice. And anytime I'm tracing or drawing something that I don't want to use later with my fusible, I don't want to accidentally cut. I just put a few lines like that. And that tells my brain I'm not going to cut there. Okay. So now we've gone ahead and we've created the shape for what you see here is all of the purple. That's right. This space was cut out and there's a pink piece of fabric that is laid behind there that actually makes you see the letters, but the letters were cut away. Like I said, it's reverse applique. So we need actually one more heart. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come in here use my little shark applicator, uh, hold it like a pen, and I'm just going to cut out the excess 
that I need. And then I'm going to take this second piece here and I'm going to start to float it around onto my heart. And I can see I have almost exactly what I need to fit in here. I don't want to make just a rectangle that would fit right here. With the machine quilting, you would start to be able to see that possibly. I want a piece that fits almost all the way out to the edges. So that's the next thing I'm going to trace for. And if you don't have enough, just grab yourself another piece of heat and bond and then that'll be fine. But for this, we're just close enough. You can see as I manipulate around here. And what I'm going to do again is I'm tracing a heart that is smaller. Then the heart we need, or that we already used, but big enough to make sure that it gets inside of all of my letters. So I'm cutting it pretty close there. No big deal. I come around here just like that. And now I have a smaller heart that will be cut from the pink fabric. Let me show you how that's gonna be done. Now, iron's nice and hot. One of the things I like to do is I wanna cut away this excess fusible web, but I'm not cutting right on the line because the line will be my tracing, excuse me, the line will be my cutting line later on. And when you use your fusible web, if you've never done this before, by having the glue go right to the edge of your applique piece, it acts as a fray check later on, okay? So I've trimmed this piece down now to make sure that it is um, basically gonna save as much fabric as possible. And then with my heat and bond, my fusible web, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and use a dry, hot iron. And of course, different brands have different instructions. So please consult with the instructions that came with your fusible web. So um, you're not maybe following my instructions if you're not using the heat and bond is what I'm trying to say. And that is my legal disclaimer for this afternoon as well. My attorneys will be reaching out to your folks at home if you... <laughs> So anyways, here we go. And now what I'm also doing is I don't need to preheat, but I would like to get the wrinkles out. And it was a fat quarter. That's all we're doing. I'm gonna position this so that my fusible web doesn't fall off the edge. That would destroy the ironing surface. I wanna make sure that all of the glue is trapped within my piece of fabric. And I'm even gonna start over here on the edge and I'm just gonna slowly glide the iron. It takes about three seconds for the heat and bond feather light to bond to its background fabric. And we're gonna to need to go ahead and do this for our um, pink. I was calling it, but it was really the petal with the beautiful uh, silver overlay on top of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dive into my jam colored cotton couture. Let's open this up here. Press the wrinkles out as well. And let's go ahead, like I was trying to say a moment ago, let's cut away the extra paper and glue now so that it isn't left behind on our beautiful fabric because once it's on the fabric, it's always on the fabric. And if you were going to do other regular sewing with it, you probably wouldn't want it there in the future. We're gonna cut out this heart completely. It fits in the center of the white fat quarter. So I don't need to center this piece yet. I can get it real close to the edge. Again, uh, effectively saving as much of my beautiful fabric as possible. The rest will be used for this beautiful applique, of course. Now you see me gliding my iron over the top right now, that's to evenly heat it. Once it's an applique, I only do a press and lift method. I never slide the iron at all like that. Okay, here we go. Now it is time to go ahead and start cutting out a few of these pieces so you can see the way it all comes back together. And the first thing I wanna do is gonna be the easiest thing to do. And if you are using the Shark Rotary Cutter, um, I love to promote it because I invented it, of course, but it is a tool that is designed for single layer or you know a fabric and a fuse kind of thing. You're only gonna do this. I'm not cutting both layers at the same time. I'm putting pressure into it like it's a pen. And I'm also gonna go ahead and grab and drive actually with this left hand over here. I'm pushing forward with the fabric and I'm, or excuse me, pushing forward on the shark cutter. Reposition. And then go ahead, bring it right back here. And then you're just gonna follow that line. And why do I like to cut with a rotary cutter for my applique? Well, because it makes that same beautiful clean line that it would if you were cutting your regular strips or your squares or your rectangles and triangles for um, your quilting. 
I did a 14 millimeter blade because I believe the smaller the wheel, the, clo the tighter the corner. So that was what the thought was behind that. And you can see it takes a little bit of practice and control, but once you figure it out, it runs really smooth. And a lot of the local quilt shops now carry this. If you can't find it, of course, you can find it at my website. But we always want to support our local quilt shops and our online retailers out there because that's how they stay in business. I am blessed as it is. But again, if you can't find it, it's on the website. Now, this is the other reason why I love this tool, and I'll stop promoting this today. I want to get inside and I want to cut these letters out, as I said a moment ago. So the easiest would be to show you how we're going to cut out the center of the O and we're going to save that for later. So now I just dropped the cutter right in. Did you notice that? I didn't have to like pre-drill out a hole or fold it in half or do anything like that. And now I'm just doing my best to slowly curve the fabric and push forward on the cutter as I go around there and I cut this out. And remember, it's got an arrow, so I'm gonna save it. If it had an X, we'd <whistles> gone it goes. Now that that's on there, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the outside of the line. And remember folks, it's the outside of the line that matters. So if you had to do any cheating work or recalibrating work, you would cheat to the inside. And of course, I'm gonna have to use my small scissors for that word with up there. It is just too small. And I can prove that because you see there's a sample already hanging on the wall in this video. So I know <laughs> that I gotta use the small cutters. So now the other thing I like to do is I like to work in sections. I'm gonna come back around here. I've done the top end. Now I'm going to do the bottom end and really just taking my time. And what the real key is, is using that left hand there so that I can really control the motion as that goes around. Lift that out there. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this out nice and slow. And I will be back in a second, like I said, with all of the words cut out so I can show you how to put the pink behind to create the reverse applique. But this is gonna take me a few moments and I really want you to do a nice job on your cutting because this is where all of the design comes from. Be back in a second, folks. And as I was starting to say a little bit before, yes, I absolutely did cut out the word with, with my scissors. And I also wanna point out before we go any further, a couple of the little tricks that might come in handy. Uh, before I began cutting with the scissors, I put little X's in these little hole areas with the shark cutter so I could get the scissors in there much more easily. And then as you look on the backside, if there's any trimmings or anything you need to do, please do it while the paper is still on your applique. The paper is what makes it so easy to cut. Once you peel the paper away, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to control. So make sure everything's trimmed just the way you want it, and then you are ready to rock and roll. So then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and grab kind of in a small corner. Uh, sometimes if my hands are fighting me, I can grab like with a, my same stiletto. What I want to make sure I'm doing when I'm starting is as I start to peel back, I can really see that the sheen that was the glue or is the glue has transferred now from the paper over to the back side of the fabric. And then I'm just going to kind of hold it and pull slowly as I approach the area where I've done all the cutaway. There might be some spots that want to drag or peel back or whatnot, but it looks like this is going great. Now this isn't super tacky. There are other versions that are, but not from Heat and Bond. So right now I don't have to worry about this being like duct tape in the wind flying up here and sticking, but some other brands may. So you just want to be careful of that so that those don't get bonded together like that. And then we next want to take a full fat quarter of our wonderful hash dot, the ebony color. This is going to be our background. And you can see at the moment, of course, I still have my selvage on here, but that's not going to be concluded as part of my design. So as I'm getting ready to lay this out right now, I'm going to bring it on over into my workspace and I'm going to build it right here. I'm going to make sure that I have everything just the way I want it right here as I'm getting started. And that starts with a really nice pressing. Getting all the wrinkles out now. If there's any loose threads or anything hanging around, you do want to tidy up because we're going to iron everything down to secure it. And now as I come in, I have my pink a heart that I created that becomes the letters. This is the reverse part of the applique. I've already taken the paper off of this, of course, and I wanna kind of center it, but I'm not as worried about it as much as I am about this. As I bring in the real deal here, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float this in on top and start to align the outside edges 
of the purple. And I'm gonna wanna take out a nice good size ruler over here because one of the things you really wanna make sure is that your lettering itself is running fairly square to your design. Okay, so right now what I've done is I've put my ruler on here and I've got it uh, one of the lines on both of these squared edges right here and I can see my lettering's running a little uphill. So the first adjustment I want to make is I want to just make a little adjustment now so that the main word love is running straight along my horizon, that way it looks nice in my house. And now I'm gonna take a few extra moments and I'm just gonna measure from kind of the bulb fat end over here. Let's see, I'm about two and a quarter. Then I come over here and I'm at two and three quarters. Well, that's easy. I can just scoot it over a quarter inch. And then of course you wanna really do it visually and make sure that it looks nice, feels centered. Take a last second and make sure when I made that adjustment there that I didn't pull my letters too far out of skew. They're looking terrific as well. Now what I want you to go ahead and do before you do any pressing, one of the keys with working with fusible web is you don't want to heat it too many times. That causes the glue to break down. So I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to take all of these, and I've already taken the, the paper off the back as well, and I'm going to drop in my letters, and as I drop in my letters, I'm really making sure, this is where that stiletto or tweezers come in handy, I'm making sure I have a nice equal space or distance around, or we also call that the reveal. Okay, I've got my next little piece over here. Oh, they're getting small. And then that's gonna drop in up here. giving that little character like that. And then I've got the tiniest, tiniest little ones. There's a few of those little letters that fit up into the T and the H of my width. So I need to get those up there as well. And it's amazing the difference by filling in these spaces. Your eye is trained to read the bubble letters. And if you don't get those bubbles back in, it doesn't understand really what it's looking at. It's pretty cool. Okay, so now I have all my letters and the centers of the letters are the holes filled back in to make the reverse applique complete. Now I'm gonna take my iron, it is still dry, no steam, and I'm gonna come straight down and I'm aiming right for those whole portions. I wanna secure those first, right over here. And again, it's about that three second bond, two, three, one, two, three, and lift. Okay, we're just gonna do a press and a lift. As you get out towards the edges, if you want to glide your iron slightly, you no longer have small pieces that will go missing. And that, just like that, is now, hopefully, perfectly bonded and looking terrific. Now you see on the design wall, I've got a little added character and you can do as much or as little of the little added character as you would like. Super easy and I'm actually in miser mode. So I'm even using my scraps that were my scraps from last night. But you can see again, I've taken a couple of my other colors, the other fairy frost and my other cotton couture there. And I used the scraps of the fusible web and I just drew on some hearts really easy. And actually funny enough, if you haven't used the cutter or if you haven't drawn hearts before. I know that might sound kind of silly, but it's actually not a real easy shape. Go ahead and practice the small ones. The more you do of anything, the easier it becomes. Let me show you one last time how I found it was fairly easy to cut out the hearts with the rotary cutter. It's kind of a two-part motion. So first I want to clear out uh, any uh, excess pieces, okay, like that. Now, what I find for me is it's best to start up in the top and then roll around. See, I'm using my left hand to roll that fabric down to the tip and right through. And then I can come up here down to the bottom and again, pushing like in a forward motion up, around, and back in. And it makes a really simple and easy heart that way. 
Okay, and I like to use odd numbers. I believe I've got about nine or 11 of each of the colors up there. There's a few that overlap on top of each other. There's a few that are separate. There's big, there's small. There's pretty good looking hearts. There's some really sloppy looking ones. So you just make as many as you want, cut them all out, and then begin to position them around onto your background. But please don't iron any of them down until they're all in play. It's amazing what it takes to get them all balanced and you won't know if they're balanced until you put them all into place so really just take the time cut out all those hearts peel off all the paper and enjoy displaying them and laying them all out around your heart applique once those are set come back in with the iron again and as you press just try to avoid pressing right on the edges or right onto the main heart that you've already pressed down but either way even if you do the next and final step to this applique once it's either made into a quilt like i mentioned earlier with several blocks or several squares with lots of different words which would be really cool or just a simple small hanging like this maybe you want to put a few borders on it if I was going to do that, I would use the bright pink that we use for the letters right in here. I would put a narrow, cut a one and a quarter inch, fold it in half, nice little pipe binding right in there. And then I would put on probably about a two inch using the same purple that we did in the heart. Bang, boom, presto, fantastic. Next video coming down the pipeline is another fantastic uh, block number two from our block of the month. We're just starting from the patch party. I hope you will join me next week for that. Please subscribe to the channel. It really helps support all of that we're doing here and all of those wonderful local quilt shops out there. Next time you're in a quilt shop, please give them a hug. Tell them Rob and Mike sent you, and we will see you next time right here at Making It Fun. Adios, amigos. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.